In the early 1940s, there was little hope for patients with kidney failure. Then, three pioneers emerged who worked independently on creating a synthetic kidney called the artificial kidney. These doctors were Dr. William Kolf, Dr. Nils Alvel, and Dr. Gordon Murray and their conjoint efforts resulted in first successful hemodialysis which subsequently culminated in the first successful kidney transplantation in 1954 in Boston. At that time, independent India was sorting out its socio-political problems. It was at this time in Punjab that a young Sardar doctor decided to pursue his MD medicine on the role of kidney biopsies. His application was rejected twice as no such field as nephrology existed in the curriculum of Punjab University, Chandigarh at the time. His perseverance paid off and he was finally successful the third time when the Faculty of Medicine accepted his proposal with a special subject of genitourinary medicine as the speciality of nephrology did not exist then. When this plan gave, went to the medical sciences faculty of the Punjab University third time, I, I learned later that the dean of the faculty of medical sciences commented that this person seems to be a madman. Thus, for the first time in 1956, research work in the field of nephrology began in India. In 1958, the very first systematic study in the field of kidney disease was completed and Dr. K. S. Chug became the first nephrologist who later established the first department of nephrology in the country in January 1963 at PGI MER Chandigarh. The first golf Twin coil artificial kidney dialysis machine was gifted to Christian Medical College, Velour, in May 1961. His Excellency Sri Gopeshwar Prasad Sahi, the erstwhile Maharaja of Hathwa in the old state of Bihar, suffered from kidney failure and was the first Indian to undergo hemodialysis in independent India under the supervision of Dr. Satoru Nakamoto especially sent by Dr. William Kolf. Dr. Satoru Nakamoto also trained Dr. Philip Koshi, then Professor of Medicine at CMC Velour. In the early 60s in Mumbai, then called Bombay, the Department of Medicine of King Edward Memorial Hospital received a gift of an Olver's hemodialysis machine by Swedish philanthropist. The first hemodialysis in the financial hub of the country was done at this municipal hospital. The nephrology department at KEM Hospital was a result of the foresightedness of its chief of medicine, Dr. P. Raghavan. Under his mentorship, Dr. Vidya Acharya, a tough, no-nonsense lady emerged on the Indian nephrology scene. Indian nephrology had finally arrived. It was then felt that there should be an Indian Society of Nephrology to serve as a platform to share views and ideas by like-minded people. Dr. Chug thought of it and broached the idea with Dr. Koshi. On January 18, 1970, here in Topiwala Medical College, Mumbai, 10 founding members met. And the Indian Society of Nephrology came into existence. The first scientific meeting was formally inaugurated in Mangalore by Dr. Emilio Rotelar, President EDTA, on 16th January 1971. Subsequently, annual meetings were held jointly with the Association of Physicians of India till 1990. The first standalone meeting was held in Jaipur in 1991. The formation of the Indian Society of Nephrology was a major milestone and it kick-started the growth and development of this speciality in India. 
From 10 founding members, it has now grown to over 1900 members today. From around 6 nephrology training slots initially, there are now over 400 per year DM and DNB seats. The society has grown over the years under the leadership of its presidents. Dynamic Secretaries Nephrology teaching centers came up all across India and some of them stand out. PGI MER Chandigarh started formal nephrology training. DM Nephrology in 1969, even before the formal American Nephrology Fellowship Training Program was started. Dr. M. S. Amarason was the first DM Nephrology Fellow of the 162 doctors trained till date at PGI MER Chandigarh. He went on to establish the Nephrology Department in Madras Medical College, one of the oldest medical colleges of India, in 1972 which has subsequently trained 114 nephrologists. Meanwhile, PGI-MER had a very active academic program, giving its trainees exposure to experts from all across the globe. It trained majority of nephrologists for the Indian Armed Forces. Incidentally, both the present presidents of American Society and International Society of Nephrology are its alumni which is an eloquent testimony to the caliber of PGI Nephrology. One of Asia's foremost teaching hospitals, the Christian Medical College and Hospital Velour, started by Dr. Ida Sophia Skada, a third-generation American medical missionary, has many firsts to its credit. First dialysis, first kidney transplantation. The brave heart Mr. Bala Subramaniam was the very first kidney transplant recipient of India. This was made possible by his dedicated team of doctors and CMC has trained 112 nephrologists till date. The All India Institute of Medical Sciences aims in Delhi, the political capital of India, took the lead and has trained 119 students. In the city of Nawabs, Hyderabad, Dr. Gopal Kishan established the Nephrology Department in 1978 in Osmania Medical College. After a decade, the city had one more center, Nizam Institute of Medical Sciences, inaugurated by Sri N. T. Rama Rao. In the city of Adab and Nasakat, Lucknow, the foundation of Super Speciality Institutes SGP GIMS was laid and the nephrology department was started in 1987 under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Vijay Kher. The institute proudly boasts of its clinical and translational research labs. The Institute of Kidney Diseases and Research Center, IKDRC Ahmedabad, is personified by one name, Dr. H. L. Trivedi. An institution standing tall on three pillars of service, education and research with more than 5,500 kidney transplants, which is a landmark achievement in itself. In the city of Joy, Kolkata, nephrology started its journey way back in 1966 at the IPG MER Kolkata. The medical renal unit was started in 1974 under the pioneering leadership of Dr. Jayanta Basu and in the northeast 
in 1980 by Dr. Nandita Chaudhary, an alumnus of PGI MER Chandigarh, who started the nephrology department at the Guwahati Medical College. There are currently 21 nephrologists in the whole of the Northeast region. In addition to these government-run centers, the number of private centers took the lead in initially providing clinical care but later made forays into formal nephrology training too. The pioneers in the private sector were Just Lok Hospital Mumbai, Apollo Hospital Chennai and Sir Gangaram Hospital in Delhi. Indian training nephrologists have contributed a lot in this regard. Indian nephrologists have contributed significantly to advancing clinical research as well as educational missions across the globe. The society embraced whosoever was interested in nephrology. Dr. Chug wrote to Dr. R. N. Srivastava, a pediatrician with an interest in nephrology, inviting him to join the society. Society of Nephrology has many pediatricians interested in nephrology as its members. Two of them, Dr. Srivastava and Dr. Kumud Mehta, later rose to be the presidents of the society. Improvised polythene catheters were used to provide peritoneal dialysis in PGI MER Chandigarh in 1964. But the CAPD program took its firm roots in 1991 when Dr. Georgi Abraham took up this challenge with a lot of improvisations, roping in colleagues from other centers and coaxing the industry. The Indian CAPD program finally saw the light of the day. The society is actively involved in advocacy, be it with state or central governments to sensitize them with the magnitude of the problem and its possible solutions. The society also interacts with various international societies and has laid down guidelines incorporating Indian conditions to encourage young nephrologists and to acknowledge the contributions of senior nephrologists the scientific committee of the society awards numerous orations like Bansal oration for youngsters, Kullar oration, V. N. Acharya oration, J. C. M. Shastri oration. Kullar Oration V. N. Acharya Oration and the JCM Shastri Oration. The Credential Committee confers FISN Fellowship of Indian Society of Nephrology for their substantive contribution in the field of nephrology and towards society by its members under stringent criteria. The nation too has recognized the seminal contributions made by members of Indian Society of Nephrology and the Union Government has conferred Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri on 11 members so far.
The Indian Journal of Nephrology is the mouthpiece of the society and showcases the work being done in different centers. Under its illustrious editors, Dr. H. L. Trivedi, Dr. K. S. Chug, Dr. R. K. Sharma, Dr. Vinay Sakuja, the present editor Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, IJN has made tremendous progress evidenced by increased readership and citations of the published articles in the journal. It is indexed in PubMed and currently the acceptance rate of submitted articles is around 20%. Indian nephrology has a much greater role to play in the near future in the international arena. We are here to mark the golden jubilee of the Indian Society of Nephrology and to celebrate its emergence into the sunshine of adulthood and maturity. Indian nephrology community is confident and self-assured today. The world outside looks at our community for leadership in patient care, advocacy, research and training so that the pool of knowledge that exists here can benefit the kidney community around the world in regions that grapple with similar healthcare challenges. It is very fortunate that we are here today as our association steps into the golden era. We have been able to reach here only because of camaraderie, bonhomie and joie de vivre shared by the members of ISN. ISN annual meetings are an important academic event in the calendar being attended by increasing number of national and international delegates over the years. Academics is admixed with vivacious cultural evenings with a song and dance which marks the culmination of every meeting. It is not only its fraternal bond which keeps us going but also the passionate discussions the heated arguments and the somewhat unsavory comments at times. It shows that we are not indifferent and we all care for the well-being of this association. We have come a long way but we undoubtedly have to go much further. But at this moment, let's celebrate our association. Let's celebrate us and our constant endeavor to excel.